Hello students, welcome to e-learning with Divine Public School Navsari. We are continuing with the same chapter that is Banking and Monetary Policy. And in today's lecture, that is fifth lecture, we are going to continue with the same topic that is Instrument of Monetary Policy. In that we have studied some of the quantitative measures and then we are going to continue. And then after we are going to study about the qualitative measures. So these are the two last points with topics which are been left and we are going to go with this particular two topics and then after we'll complete this chapter 4 banking and monetary policy now let's start with this particular quantitative measures now you have already studied that there are seven types of different quantitative measures in that first one that is bank rate which we have learned bank rate repo rate and reserve repo rate and stabilization under this uh, under emergency situation these three topics are already clear and it has been already taught in the previous uh, lecture let's just recapitulate that is a bank rate so what is a bank rate bank rate you find that that uh, RBI lends money to the commercial banks means when a short period of time or for a long period of time you find that whenever uh, uh, commercial banks require certain money an emergency uh, money shortage of money and they try to take loan from where they will not take from the we can say people but they will take from the RBI so RBI try to go with this type of um, from RBI so RBI lends money to this particular commercial banks and that at that rate which the RBI lends to commercial bank that is called as bank rate so same way we try to take loan from banks same way bank commercial banks also try to take loan from RBI so that rate is called bank rate and when we take loan from them that is called interest of rate of interest then after comes uh, it was uh, before like we can say till 2016 it was been used and it was 7% which the bank, ra bank rate was there then after came re repo rate and reverse repo rate because uh, this bank rate was useful for longer period of time but to measure the short period of time inflation time it was not possible to control the this particular movement uh, in a short period of time so that time we find that repo rates and reverse repo rates started using up now what are repo rates and reverse repo rates repo rates and reverse repo rates if we have learned that whenever commercial banks require money they try to give cert, uh, they try to sell government securities bonds debentures shares to the rbi and I, rbi will purchase it now there is an again one agreement between them that is they commercial banks have to repurchase that so RBI uh, makes an agreement that I am taking, I am purchasing now but I, whenever I need or we can say after a short period of time you have to again repurchase it. So this is what the condition where you find that uh, commercial banks raise fund by selling the securities, government securities to RBI and take the fund and then after it uh, promises to repurchase it at a discounted rate. So when whenever RBI requires they try to sell this particular government securities and or at a specific period of time when they have to return it or repurchase commercial bank have to repurchase they will purchase at a discount rate so that is called as reverse repo rate so when commercial banks again repurchase their own government securities only that time we find that they will give funds to RBI and RBI raise funds and this purchase is called as reverse repo rate so that is a discounted rate now that were the two things where shortfall whenever there is a requirement of money like this situation pandemic situation we have seen the repo rate has came to 4.4 percentage and the reverse repo rate came to 3.75 percent so this is where the one year bond has been uh, one year of agreement has been signed that they have been collected 1.7 lakh crores from this uh, go selling of government securities to the RBA and all these things again then after a special window that is stabilization under emergency situation so some of the emergency crisis situations you find that RBI try to purchase government securities shares debentures apart from this normal that is rep repo rate and reverse repo rate so if suppose there is a totally shortage of we can say in uh, commercial banks nothing is left out and they require money there is a special window for them also for emergency also and that time the whatever shares or debentures they are having that particular it may be like uh, private or anything but that is been sold to the rbi and rbi gives funds to them so it is also known as marginal standing facility that is msf 
uh, and again you find that the rate is higher than repo rates and it was 7 percentage that time then came then the, uh, these are the three things which we have studied now we have to start from this four points that is cash reserve ratio fourth point so let's start with cash reserve ratio so as we have already seen in credit creation what is the cash reserve ratio it is a certain percentage of money where uh, from the primary deposit we have to keep oh sorry not we have uh, commercial banks have to keep it there uh, banks so they have to maintain certain percentage of uh, reserves cash reserves for them so under RBI Act 1934 if we say all commercial banks have to keep certain minimum cash reserve with the RBI also so again with the RBI they have to keep with them also again same thing they have to keep with the RBI also then after initially when the starting from that you find that cash reserve ratio was decided 5 percentage of demand deposit now demand deposit means that is a primary deposit so all those which people are uh, depositing their money into the bank that time they have to maintain 5 percentage of that particular reserves then after you find that 2 percent of time, de time deposit now what is time deposit time deposits are we can say fixed deposit or long term deposit so fixed deposit fds are there which are been kept so whatever the amount of fds which are been made totally for that two percentage of reserve should be maintained so this is how crr is to be kept with rbi and with the bank now then after in 1962 till 1962 it was going like that then after you find that it variable crr that is cash reserve ratio variables between three percent to fifteen percentage of the total deposit now total here stands for both that is demand deposit and time deposit that is primary deposit who, where people try to go with just going in the uh, going to the bank and deposit their money into the saving account and then after you find that time deposit time deposit means you find that fix um, so both the total deposits should be maintained between 3 to 15 percentage then after this was also able to um, help to control inflation that's why it is in quantitative measures because you find that how repo rates and bank rate was been used same way this particular cash reserve ratio was been used so whenever there is an inflation situation inflation means you find that there is a continuous rise in prices so that situation when why it has been happened because there is more supply of money in the market so to control that particular supply of money what will happen RBI tells to the commercial banks to more uh, increase their cash reserve ratio so when they increase the rate of cash reserve ratio what will happen you find that if suppose it becomes 15 to 20 percent what will happen only 80 percent will be given as credit creation but where it was first was 5 percent or we can say 3 percent so 97 percentage 97 percentage of credit creation was been and so, so more supply of money when it is to 3 percent but when it comes to 15 to 20 percent there will be less credit creation and when there is less credit creation the supply of money will get decreased and it will overcome the situation like inflation so this is how you find that cash reserve ratio also has been there so whenever there is an inflation it was happening up they try to increase the cash reserve ratio now here it is written when the crr is increased you find commercial banks have lesser deposit yes when crr increase they have the lesser deposit money in their hand because they have to maintain this reserves are maintained so less money in their hand for credit creation and this will cut in cut in or we can say cut short the inflation again our uh, crr is reduced so when you find that risk is been reduced like at current situation you find that the crr has been three percentage it has been now at present it is only three percent which has been kept so 97 percent of the money flow uh, deposits can go go for credit creation so commercial banks have more deposit money for credit creation and this will help to come out of the situation like depression which has been happening up which has been came, uh, happened in the month of march april so that situation can be controlled and we come out we can come out from that particular situation so that is how you find that crr is been reduced that time so currently the crr is three percentage so this is how they try to control the situation of inflation and depression with crr also and they try to raise fund also in the emergency situation or pandemic situation crisis situations we can say i hope you have been clear with cash reserve ratio as we have already studied credit creation then comes statutory liquidation now this statutory liquid ratio liquidity ratio means you find that it is based upon time deposit total deposit under the banking regulation act 1949 
all banks have to maintain equal to or not less than 25% of their total time deposits sorry total deposits their total bills again time plus demand deposit that is primary deposit and fixed deposit in the form of cash gold or unencumbered approved securities now unencumbered means we can say unclaimed unclaimed securities means those securities where there are no claims that is free of uh, claims or we can say they are free of doubts which they can keep in their hand where there is no penalty nothing or nothing errors or which has been charged so what is been the main thing is you find that in slr as per the rule they have to maintain 25 percent of their deposits so whatever deposit came they have to maintain in the form of cash either gold or security form so that whenever there is a requirement of money this particular cash gold and securities unclaimed securities can be sell easily in the market and help us to create more fund whenever it has been required so it helps the bank to create more fund this whenever it requires so this is what it was about but if you find that uh, if i tell you in between the days of 1960s 70s time you find that it came to 40 percentage also so it came to not from 25 but it it they have raised to 40 percent exactly but then after it again reduced to nearly 25 percent now if you go with this uh, higher if this particular thing slr is higher if the higher the slr it diverts the bank fund from loans and advances to approve government securities and helps to meet the government expenditure now what will happen it says that suppose whenever this slr is higher so bank has to make reserve in the form of encumbered securities also so they will purchase what securities so when they will purchase securities and that to not private but government so what will happen this will helps to keep government securities and government will get certain money for their expenditure also because banks are purchasing government securities so go governments are getting government those government securities by uh, government who are selling this government securities will grace for from that and this will help for doing government expenditure on a, other hand it reduces the capacity of bank to create loan yes because this certain percentage of reserves are kept by bank what will happen same thing in cash reserve ratio if certain percent of cash only is been kept like 10 percent so 90 percent credit creation happening but here it is talking about 25 percent so what will happen only 75 percentage of uh, we can say credit creation can be having which is less so this is also the rate which they have to maintain so you find that it reduces the capacity of bank to create loans and raise money supply by credit creation so it becomes again the supply of money also becomes difficult it reduces so this is how when slr is higher you find that again there is a shortage or we can say there is a less supply of money in the market because they have to maintain reserves in the form of gold and we can say securities government securities also so cash it was there again with gold and uncumbered so it is of total deposit both not only cash reserve but time deposit also this is how it was been happening same opposite will happen if it is lower so when lower is a slr that is statutory liquidity ratio you find that it will increase the capacity of bank to create more loans or more credits and helps to raise supply of money in the market so you find that when this particular rates are less you find that more money is been um, there left out with bank for create giving loans and when more loans are given people will have more fund and they will spend more so it will supply the money it will help to supply the money in the market so this is how you find that banks try to go with this type of different types of norms and these are the different policies of rbi where there is cash reserve ratio bank rate repo rate reverse repo rate which we have studied now let's talk about the next point that is we find that open market operations now open market operations means you find that there is a selling or buying or we can say sale or purchase of government securities or bonds by the rbi in the open market means whenever there is a requirement of money commercial banks can openly sell that particular securities without that reverse repo rate and repo rate simply they can just sell their government securities or they can purchase securities in the open market by the rbi so rbi purchases government bonds from the market supply of money in the economy rises yes 
so you find that this particular thing is done by whom rbi so rbi purchase this particular uh, government securities and what will happen when they purchase more funds are given to government and government uh, when they get funds there is more supply of money they will do more amount of expenditure for the development of the country then if the supply of money in the economy falls suppose if they do does not purchase if suppose R, rbi sells and they try to rbi creates more fund for them and sells the government secret there is a shortage of money and the money supply falls what will happen this particular situation comes so when rbi sells such bonds in the open market the money will go to the rbi and in the economy the supply of money will reduce so this is what open market is all about such operations are undertaken for inflation and depression so during the time of inflation and depression only this particular rbi does the work they will try to purchase not from the commercial banks but directly from the uh, open market directly they will purchase they will not uh, they will not go for commercial banks so here you find that open market operations are done by rbi there is a selling and buying of government securities so that they can control the supply of money so everything monetary policy if you study it is dealing only with demand or that is supply of money in the market that is demand for money and supply of money if they that is the main apex we can say function of the monetary policy that is the supply of money which is been controlled by whom by the rbi so this is different 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 measures which are been done again last point that is this instrument was not you uh, not used before or we can say prior to 1991 it came out after 1991 why because of industrial policy more and more con- companies from foreign came up they started build up and you find that there was a lot many development and that time there was a lot money uh, a lot much of money which was been required so that time this policy was made and happening up and this is how rbi come made control over the market money market if you see then comes the seventh point that is the sterilization of rbi account that is sterilization balancing of we can say or analyzing of rbi account against the shocks arising from the excessive increase or decrease in amount of foreign exchange so many times you find that foreign currencies that is dollars euros pound all these foreign currencies monies are higher than us because they are the developed countries so you find that their foreign monies their economy is developed and it compared to indian which is developing country and there is a there is a difference of the prices so you find that most of time rbi is who try to keep his a custodian for foreign reserve as we have studied in the function so they try to maintain the foreign reserves also so in their account of foreign reserves how it try to balance it let's see let's study so when there is an excessive inflow of foreign exchange means when there is a situation you find that more of foreign currencies are there coming up in our uh, we can say india so more flow of foreign currencies are there at that time what will happen make means how it can be because of more doing trade or foreign investment which came up in india so if foreign companies try to come in india they try to invest more funny more money will come in dollars euros pounds or we can say chinese companies so yen or different currencies same way you find that by trading or export import export things so when more exports are then more fun will come so this are the two things where more funds comes and when there is excessive thing rbi try to go with selling of this government securities which is equal to the amount of inflow so what they will do rbi will sell the government securities so that they can create more reserves more we can say space for, for this type of foreign currencies so this is how they try to go with balancing with the foreign currencies because foreign reserve is the most usable reserve and it is most helpful because uh, compared to the indian rupee foreign currencies are more and that can be helped when the time their money is been uh, we can say their dollar euro pound prices are more and if we are in need we can sell that particular things and you find that we can create funds out of that so this is how you find that every year rbi try to maintain this particular uh, account that is foreign reserves and whenever there is an excess of inflow what will happen they will try to sell the government securities so that which how much that is equal to the inflow how much inflow is coming how much excessive is the equal to that that much government securities are been sold and foreign reserves are been uh, 
on kept so this sterilize or we can say this balance the balance sheet against the external shocks and this is how rbi try to maintain the accounts from foreign countries or foreign uh, currency reserve or foreign exchange reserve so this are the seven quantitative measures which affect uh, uh, which impacts on the whole economy where every economy is been affected all the sectors are affected from it and it mostly try to control the inflation and the deflation or sometimes depression or crisis which has been there so this is how all the quantitative measures or mon of monetary policy is all about which has been controlled by the rbi now let's study about the quanti qualitative measures now it is talking about you find that here selective measures now what is qualitative measures or selective measures here you find that there are four types if you remember first is security requirement second is margin requirement third is ceiling of credit and fourth is discriminatory interest rate now let's quickly start this four topics first that is selective re uh, security requirement now what is security requirement uh, if you have gone with your parents or if your parents have taken any kind of loan from the bank what does the government uh, bank will ask they will ask security so many a times you find that so many not many times you find that most of the times you find that whatever type of loan which you are taking if it's a big amount of loan they try to go with taking some securities because government uh, banks does not give loan directly to the individual who ever comes they are certain types of security they will check the bank details they will check to where that person is staying living what kind of property is having what type of job he is doing what type of business he is doing which category caste he belongs and everything is been checked by the uh, bank and then after this particular loans are given so you find that that is the certain type of securities which are been there again you find that so bank must ensure that public returns the loan given to them so you find that why its security is been taken because they try to uh, take uh, precautions where public should pay back the loan amount along with the in, uh, interest so for that security is been taken up by you find that banks then after you find that they lend money against some security deposit from the borrower so whoever is a borrower whoever is a individual borrower or a group borrower a company they try to keep their certain amount of properties into as a security so that then only they will try to go many times what are the things which are kept in the securities you find that why it has been there first of all why that is why it is because suppose whenever the borrower is not able to pay at that time they will try to uh, uh, we can say purchase this or we can say they will try to take over this particular securities and they try to sell in the market to cover up their loan amount or the due amount so this is how bank try to use and they try to seize or they try to take over the mon uh, property whichever is been uh, whichever as kept in the security so that they can recover their dues if the individual or a borrower does not pay repay the loan now what are the things kept for the security that may be jewelries deposits like cars or we can say deposits are there cars are there house are there lands are there so all different properties whichever type of property which you are having that particular properties or wealth is been kept under the security and on the basis of security the loan is been sanctioned to you and then after you can go with it so if you does not pay if a borrower does not pay what will happen the bank will take over that property try to sell not try to they will try to sell it and they try to recover their due amounts so this is how security requirement is all about so it is for the selective it is not for it does not affect the whole it is the person who is borrowing it is affect the, that particular person only that's why it is coming under selective measures so this is the first thing that is security requirement now let's study about the margin requirement now margin means what certain standards certain things so rbis all have set some margin for granting loans against security so what type if you have uh, for example suppose you want to go abroad now you know how much expenses is been there for canada or usa so you have to keep certain type you have to show some property you have to keep certain type of securities if you does not have that much money so that for they you will take loan your parents will take loan for you make you to study abroad so what will happen you find that 
many types of securities which are kept suppose your house has been kept so your house is suppose of 1 crore but they will not grant you 1 crore they will not grant you 1 crore but only certain percentage of amount only is been given to you and certain is been kept by them so this is how margin is been there there are certain standard like for example 1 crore bungalow is that they try to keep margin of for example 30 percent so what will happen 70 lakh of rupees loan only will be given up so this is how it has been there so an individual is given a certain percentage of loan as sorry certain percentage as loan of the total value of assets offered as security so whatever type of assets you are keeping as a security for that certain margin is been taken by them and apart from that only whichever is left of with that particular percentage loan is been given to you again you find that bank has directed to selectively keep different margins for different purposes yes for different different purposes like investment purpose business purpose for going abroad purpose for different kinds of purpose whichever so there are different margin as well as it depends from property to property also so this is how you find that certain margins are being kept so that bank will not grant fully they will go with only the margin st standard margin as instructed by the RBI so this is how you find it now if I give you example like this like suppose you want to go abroad and I told you like not you have for example there is a costing of 15 lakh suppose you having a bungalow of we can say 25 lakhs of so 25 lakh in that 70 percent it's so it is nearly about 16 17 lakh of uh, lakhs of money which is been given to you and from that it is easily available you a uh, student loan and your properties of your house property has been taken up by bank and then after it has been done so this is how certain margins are been kept Men mostly the margins are near to 20 30 percentage where they try to grant you loan nearly 70 to 80 percentage only some cases it is differ also because every it is differ from purpose to purpose and security security so this is how you find that you get margin requirement so it is uh, coming under selective measures then comes the ceiling of credit now the word ceiling means frozen or we can say cancelling or we can say seizing up the particular credit so when does it happen so RBA also prescribes is ceiling for credit for different purposes now here it is only one sentence it has been written but for broadly explanation I tell you like suppose a businessman has taken so much of loans it has been using investing it is going on well and well and well but there are certain limits it cannot take further more amount of loan until unless that particular backside loans are been clear like if you see uh, in Kingfishers or we can say Vijay Malia you find that it has been provoked that he has taken so many kind of loans different different amount of loan by keeping different different securities but most of the thing because due to that particular bank manager and he has a good he has maybe bribed or any other thing so because of that you find that this particular scam or scandal was been done by Vijay Malia and went for abroad so you find that many a times if you are one loan is going on two loans are going on and apart from that there are certain loans again you want to take but they will not give you until unless other loans will will you reap uh, you must uh, pay so that is how you find it but in that case it was a bribe or we can say it was a scandal done by the manager as well as Malia so that was a loss big loss which was been happening up so you find that this is how so many certain times RBI try to check as well as they try to check whether how much loans are given and apart from that standard money loan should not be given until unless it is every time they are repaying time to time so you find that it prescribes that certain times you have to seal you have to froze that you should not give more amount of credit you should not give credit to the businessman or any other those who are taking only at a limited particular uh, limit or standard only the loan should be given apart from that it will seize all of your credit so this is how it has been going up then comes the last point that is you find that discriminatory interest rate now in discriminatory, uh, in discriminatory interest rate you find that it is talking about different different persons like here 
the discriminatory interest rate it is talking about like you find that different different persons like farmers or businessmen if farmer is coming for asking loans the rate of real uh, the rate of interest is different if a businessman is coming for a loan for investment the rate of interest will is different if a small if a individual as uh, salarized person is taking loan for his personal use the uh, we can say the interest loan is the rate of interest is different so different different uh, people with different different uh, we can say work there is a discriminatory there is a discrimination which is been done by different different people and different caste of people with different uh, service of people so this is how you find that discriminatory rate of interest is been done so for rich people businessmen people the interest rate will be high but the for poor farmer or individual salaries for fund salaries persons you find the rate of interest is uh, will be less so you find that this is called as discriminatory rate of interest where you find that as per the different rbi goes with like rbi suggests different different rates of interest for different different types of lending now this is why it is called discriminatory rate of interest so for different purpose and different categories you find that there are different interest rate so is that is the fourth one that is discriminatory interest rate i hope you have been clear with it if you find any difficulty ask me message me and then after we'll go with test now we have to start test we will going we will be taking your test so start revising up i will soon you, uh, i will inform you soon whether what chapter with uh, how many questions or we can say how many marks test which are been there i will inform you everything but uh, you go with all the points if you find any difficulty ask me message me personally so that i can clear your doubts before your test been started thank you